it's Marcus Giuliano from HealthyChefDude.com. I'm a chef on a mission. A mission to bring better food, right, Jamie? You got it. How'd you like your better food I made you the, today? Your it shake? It's pretty good. You didn't like it at first. At first you? I didn't, but it's wearing. Made it. Jamie a smoothie this morning. Pine nuts weren't the best thing. Pine nuts smoothie. aren't a hit in the smoothie. Brazil nuts are better. Cashews make it creamy. But there's goji berries in here, spinach, coconuts, avocado, sunflower sprouts. There's a little bit of mango. I put a nice ripe mango in here and an apple. So I'm on my second one right now. Today's topic, uh, treated seafood. Um, treated seafood is an issue. And seafood is treated with carbon monoxide. Yes, carbon monoxide, that odorless gas that, um, that can kill you, the toxic stuff, is actually put on seafood. Or really a lot of a lot of meats, but primarily we're going to talk today about seafood. There's an article I read today how the fresh tilapia guys are losing market share to. Let me just turn off my uh, volume here. Fresh tilapia guys are losing the market share to frozen tilapia, and frozen tilapia and frozen fish is CO treated with this odorless gas, carbon monoxide. And what it does is it makes the fish look brighter, and it makes it look better longer. So you can't, it's really misleading sometimes because you can't tell if the fish is actually bad unless you actually smell it. But what happens if it's allergy season and you're sneezing or if, you, if you're, you're, no, you're, you know, you're congested or you have a cold or something or you just can't smell like you used to, then all of a sudden you have a serious problem. Is your fish bad? But it looks great because you, no problem there. So what they do is they treat this frozen fish to make it look fresher, brighter, make it look better. So the fresh, the, the frozen tilapia or grocery stores are taking tilapia and rethawing the tilapia, thawing it out, not rethawing, thawing it out, putting it on the shelf as fresh tilapia. Now, CO treating seafood is legal in the United States. It's, Ill it's illegal in most countries, by the way, of course, um, as are most things in the United States are legal and not legal elsewhere. Most countries, it's illegal, including Canada. But the United States has passed this law to gently treat, gently treat seafood with uh, carbon monoxide. Now, the argument is, well, seafood has carbon monoxide in it to begin with. Well, yes, carbon monoxide is a byproduct of, um, of animals, and just a normal living process. It's the waste that comes out of them. So there are very, very low levels of carbon monoxide already in the fish, but that's naturally occurring carbon monoxide. We produce it, it's just, a, it's just the effect of living. So but they're treating this fish now with carbon monoxide, it looks better, you can't tell the difference, or it actually looks better than the actual fresh stuff. So the fresh tilapia guys are saying, well, you know, we give up here, we give up, we cannot, no, we can no longer compete with the frozen stuff. The fresh stuff is a higher price, the frozen stuff is stabilized at a lower price, grocery stores are thawing it out, putting it on the shelves, in the seafood counter, and it looks great. The problem here is even though CO may be, CO treating fish may be totally legal in the US, as consumers we have, we have the right to know. And the problem is they're not telling us, and this is the problem the tilapia producers are having, they're not saying that the fish is CO treated and it should be labeled as such. In fact, a lot of the seafood that you see in your seafood counter is actually called what's refreshed. It starts out as frozen, they put it, they thaw it out, they slack it, and they put it in the seafood counter, and it looks fresh. Some grocery stores I have seen, I don't do a lot of shopping in grocery stores, but some grocery stores I have seen actually use the term refreshed in that terminology or in the labeling. So those are the honest stores. And if I've never really seen anybody list the, list the CO, carbon, uh, you know, carbon monoxide added, odorless, smokeless gas. If you see the words odorless, smokeless gas added, that's carbon monoxide in the fish. So, found this great tilapia farm. It was in the article today that I actually read. Regal Springs Tilapia out of uh, Florida. They get stuff out of uh, Ecuador and up and through uh, Central America, through Honduras and everything. They have farms that they, that they buy from. They have a very strict no CO policy on their frozen fish. And of course, their fresh is no CO as well. And they were quoted in the article. And they're up in arms about this too because it's very misleading. And I learned something about tilapia today that I, I really wasn't um, sure of. And I've been on tilapia farms before. I've been on tilapia farms. I've seen them do it. Um, and I was unaware of this. But when tilapia, the, the best tilapia, now a lot of people say, well, tilapia tastes dirty. Well, yes, tilapia can taste dirty because it's eating a lot. We are what we eat, basically. And it happens with fish too. So if you eat dirty food, you're going to taste like dirty food. 
So tilapia are bottom feeders. They're feeding on the bottom and they're eating all the waste that's happening on the bottom of these ponds or lakes. So of course they're actually going to pick up that dirty, that muckiness in the flavor. Like people say, oh, I don't eat tilapia because of that. And then people, other people say, oh, gee, I found this tilapia that tastes so great and wonderful. What's the difference? It's what they're eating. Now when you raise tilapia in a larger environment, such as a lake as opposed to a pond, you can actually put a floor, a subfloor, yes, a subfloor on the lake where all the actual droppings that are happening and garbage is actually getting through into past the holes in the subfloor and get to the bottom of the lake. Then the tilapia can never get to the bottom of the lake to actually eat the waste. They can only eat what it's fed, what's being dropped into the lake as food. Very interesting. Now ponds are typically smaller environments. They, they don't really put a subfloor because they're smaller environments so the fish roam around the whole pond and eat what's on the bottom. Now Regal Springs, I had a great conversation with Regal Springs today, they actually filter or purge their fish while they're living for the last 24 hours, even a little longer, through a, through a system where it's being pumped fresh spring water and they purge all of the, any of the food that was actually into the fish out for the last 24 hours, which then again sort of helps the fish in flavor as well and just this whole sustainability factor. So tilapia is right now the world's number one produced or eaten fish worldwide. In the United States, it's number three behind catfish and trout. So very interesting, tilapia is on a worldwide phenomenon and it's great because farmers, I learned a long time ago, farmers love it. It spawns once a month as opposed to trout, which is like once or twice a year. Once a month they spawn, they grow faster, vegetarian fed, that's why it's a sustainable fish because they're not robbing or, or harvesting wild fish to feed tilapia to, to have a net or a loss, a deficit loss in the protein level. If you, this is the biggest problem with farm salmon and other farm species. If you're going to harvest three pounds of wild fish in the ocean to only gain one pound of farm salmon, it doesn't make sense. Why aren't we eating the fish that's actually out in the ocean? This is the theory. You know, we're actually depleting our facilities to produce this. Tilapia is the opposite. It's it's um, a vegetarian-fed fish, and they actually convert a lot more of the the grains or the the, the vegetarian feed to actual weight, which is great. So, tilapia and all fish, be very careful when you go to a restaurant, ask. You have every right to know if your fish is treated with CO. The sushi, the bright the bright tunas, the sushi tunas, the bright tunas, those are treated. There's no way possible that you're gonna get tuna that, that's, that, that is that bright. These orange, really bright orange colors. So ask, you have every right to know if your fish is being treated. And the law was written so we have to know. So the fish, the boxes when they come frozen are labeled. So the restaurant is going to know, the seafood counter is going to know wherever you're at because it's on the boxes. We have every right and it's by law you have to know this. If you're a chef, my suggestion would be try to avoid buying fish to treat with CO. Now you're going to look at it and say, wow, gee, the fish doesn't look as bright and this and that. Explain to your customers what you're doing. By all means, they're going to understand. I buy this great tilapia from Ecuador. It's a frozen tilapia, frozen at sea, um, small day boat caught stuff, frozen at shore as soon as it's landed actually and it's non-treated and it does cost a little more money but because it's all hand line caught as opposed to long line caught but when you compare it to other frozen mahi-mahi you, it's just like wow these two mahi-mahis are totally different I wouldn't buy the one that's not treated and that's a logical assumption to most chefs and the most consumers you walk into the frozen food section or the seafood section you're gonna buy something that's bright and really vibrant now with, C, with, the, with the CO is when the carbon monoxide is cutting out the oxygen from actually being able to oxidize the fish to make it look like it's like it's in the aging process. So it's giving that false sense of the enzymes breaking down in this and that where they don't break down. It's like taking a banana or an apple and soaking it in lemon juice and killing those enzymes or cutting off it from oxygen so it's not aging. Even though it really is aging but you can't see it aging. So that's the biggest problem with, with this fish is being treated they're saying that you just can't tell when the fish is old. So you can pass off older caught fish, fish that's been aging longer, older fish, you can pass it off as a fresher fish. So that's the biggest downfall. Um, let's see, I know they do it with tuna, I know they do it with mahi-mahi, it's, it's amazing that all the fish they do do it with snapper. I've seen, it, I've seen it on all these fish in these frozen boxes. Uh, so it's really tricky to really understand that, that, that yes this stuff is happening and you're going to have a lot of proponents of this that are going to swear oh it's natural, it, we're just doing something natural, it's nothing this, nothing that, nothing that, it's, it's 
carbon monoxide is toxic in large levels, lower levels, but if it's toxic in larger levels, there has to be some ramifications of it in smaller levels, even though it is coming off of a natural source and being naturally, you know, produced as, 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 we, um, as we live. So this is very tricky. So please understand the basics. We have every right to know. Um, you are what you eat. Definitely 100% without a doubt, you are what you eat. You are what you buy. So please ask up, speak up. It's your right. HealthyChefDude.com. Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. I can ramble on and ramble on. Today's lesson was tilapia and the gassing of it.